Well, I began the Julie London project mostly because I didn't realize it at the time. Subliminally, she was in my subconscious. How she approached her music is similar to what I have done as well. She likes simplicity. Come on, baby, light my fire. Try to set the night on fire. Okay, light my fire. I said to the guys, I see a Clint Eastwood movie. I see Clint Eastwood with a cigar hanging out of his mouth and his hat on, and, and I hear John with his guitar going boom. A light bulb went on John's head. Is it 16 bars? And then Mike okay. got involved in it as well. We usually get it in the first or second take. A lot of the first takes have been excellent, but so have been the, some of the second, so nothing takes too long, and if I don't get it in the first, second, or once in a while the third, I'll, I'll never get it. Usually they have the arrangements already written, but it's pretty much what is on the page. This way we're kind of coming up what's on the page. Lynn had a, a way she wanted to do it, and I was, you know, I had the opportunity to help her try to make it come together. Goody, goody for her. I hope you're satisfied. You know, when you're recording also live, like we are, and not doing overdubs, you get a certain purity of the way they recorded in the 60s. Every time we say... So United has a lot of history. Frank Sinatra was one of the first ones to record there. The other part of my puzzle of Julie London is I've got Chuck Berghofer. Chuck played with Julie London. Well, this studio right here is where I did... These boots are made for walking. Did it here in the studio in 1966, I believe it was. I worked with her father, Frank Sinatra. It was incredible. I was going to do one month trip, and I stayed six years. You know, I've never had meetings, never did any of that stuff. He'd come in and sing and leave. And sometimes if something sounded weird, he'd give you a, a look that was kind of scary. But uh, he was totally cool. Julie was uh, a different kind of singer. She was married to Bobby Troop, and that's who I worked with a lot. I started when I was. 19 years old with Bobby Troop. I've got a crush on you, sweetie pie. I'm doing my usual formats, so it'll be a, a vinyl record, and then it'll be an essay CD and probably CDs. And they have a board there, a focus right. It is only one of 10 in the world. Alan is a audiophile hero. Wherever there was a possibility of making an incredible sound and making the studio work, Alan is part of that mix. It's finding the glue to put this one together. You know, all the parts are great. And we've done 17 songs. When you have very, very good musicians who have improvised a lot and read a lot of charts, they just know how to co-create together and come together and it's less restricting. So every time we play these songs, they're different. My baby. I've got a crush on you. You don't want to repeat what's been done, you know, in the sense of uh, how to put the tune together, trying different approaches. I mean, for a musician, that's always better than having only one direction to go. We're doing this for K-Jazz. The owner of K-Jazz requested this song of me. Of me. Uh, one of the benefits on this journey that I've been on is uh, to be applauded by our local jazz station here in Los Angeles. The owner of that station, Saul, wrote to me after my last album and has described me as being one of the most outstanding jazz artists. And I can't thank him enough for that. Um, we're doing this for Saul Levine from K-Jazz. And he said, could you possibly do um, As Time Goes By? It's one of my favorites. And it was one of Julie's covers. You must remember this. A kiss is still a kiss. A sign is just a sign. This one should stay uh, diminished, right? When she's singing, it's the diminished. Yes. Yes. Time goes by. Yes. Now you were at her home yeah. often, 
And well, I traveled with, with her too. You know, and was, you played bass with her, yeah. singing. Well, with Bobby, and she sang. And Jack right. Sheldon played trumpet. Really what parties we had, Jesus! <laughs> but I mean, she was very simple. I mean, sing, sang very simply. Some of the stuff. The simpler, the better. We did 17 songs in two days. I heard it through the grapevine like you've never heard it before. Trust me. I heard it through the grapevine. If you can give these great grand studio musicians the opportunity to develop their own work as opposed to trying to execute a already done arrangement where they're supposed to personalize something that's already written and give them those, those moments, they'll come straight out with ideas. That works. I hope the listeners and my fans will have this as one of their treasures in, in their collections uh, that they want to play a lot. Try to set this night on fire. Without a love of my own.